Okay, what we're going to do today, guys, is have a look at the, uh, the new Syscon system that's been produced by a brain. Oh, I'm not sure how I pronounce your name, sir. I'm sorry if I get it wrong. Um, but uh, what we're going to have to do is actually build it and try it out. So for this particular one, I've chosen to use the Teensy 4. I believe you can use the Teensy 2 as well. So we'll kick straight in. Now what I'm going to have to do is try and set this up on the fly a bit. Um, sorry about the background noise, I'm having major problems trying to keep the CPU cool. Um, we're running at about 89, 90 degrees at the moment, that's why the uh, chiller's making a racket. So first off, you're going to need the, uh, the Teensy. Um, what I normally do is solder pins onto them and it makes them easier to work with. So what I'm going to do is just pop a load of pins on. Um, what I will do is just check whether we need any of the connections on the back of the board. And we can do that by having a look at the schematic. And as you can see, we don't. It's just the outer, the outer uh, connections all the way down. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with uh, popping pins onto the board. I bet that's going to be too short. One too short, which end up we we don't need them all, do we? No, but what I'll do, I will do them, otherwise I should curse end up cursing because I'm short or something. I'll probably go to find another row of pins. Uh, sorry about that, out of shot. Um, well, we're not actually we're using any at that end, not at all. All right, so there's one pin missing from the end. So what I'll do is mount it into a, a chop block. Well, not a chop block, a, uh, I can't even forgot my call them now. Um, a matrix block, whatever you want to call it, just to hold it together. So what we've got, we've got two rows of pins. So all I'm going to do is just pop them in, a little bit of solder. Uh, and then we'll program the chip. The guy's done quite a good job, as uh, so it's, uh, it's free. Although when I downloaded it on GitHub, the compiled version I couldn't get to work on my machine. Um, I did try and contact the guys, but uh, as I say, they haven't left a direct contact. So my guess is oh, they'll probably see this anyway. Um, I had to recompile it with version 17 in Visual Studio for it to work. Why it wouldn't work with the other one, I'll send you the error codes I got. Probably something I'm doing because I'm not particularly strictly a programmer. I'm more into hardware. I'm just going to change the chip on this micro line. As it's a little bit too small to put these on. Let's see what we got. Yeah, that's a bit better. Chisel chip. I'll just pop this one out. Don't tell them I pull it out with pliers. Uh, just stick that on the side there to cool down. And what's it do? It falls onto the table, which has got a plastic top on it. All right. Uh, it's really got to be quick, or I should burn your fingers. Okay. I'll stick that all away in a minute. So, first off, we'll just pop these on. Let's see what we got set up on this camera. Can we get, uh, uh, well, I see I've got an insert on there, have I? Okay, let's just see, can we zoom in? Zoom in. That's a little bit better. Right. So first off, what I'm going to do is solder these pins on. Now, unfortunately, my eyesight is not as good as my camera. So, <laughs> I'll have to use a... Uh, one of these things you pop on your head like a surgeon wears. Thank you. 
don't use too much heat on your iron when you're putting these on. Uh, I'm doing this at only 310, uh, 3, what have we got? 340, I think, I get 310. And this is uh, leaded solder, it's just the fact that it's very, very thin. But if you have too much heat, the flux boils away before you've got a joint. And of course, you end up then with matted joints, and they look pretty terrible. The secret of a good solder joint is not to boil away the flux. I'm sorry if you can't see at the moment, my hands are probably in the way. Uh, what you're looking for is a nice shiny builder solder. You don't want a big round blob, you want to look at it so the solder looks like it is gussy thing, uh, as in it's at an angle to the pin. Uh, you could probably see there. They're all shiny. What you don't want is great big round balls that sit on top of the pad and not actually hold on to it. So when you heat it up, make sure the iron connects to the pin. Um, and then feed a bit of solder in, act as a, a fillet between the iron tip and the pin. And it will automatically heat up the, uh, the via. And of course what happens is then the solder just pops right through the via. So you end up with a nice joint. If you're getting a bit of state with it, don't just keep on at the one pin. Walk away from it and do some other pins. Come back to it when it's cooled down a bit. Otherwise you'll melt the plastic that the pin mounts in. And you'll end up with a bit of a manky old pin that will wobble everywhere. Okay. So we're getting that. So, so I haven't been doing many projects. I have been very busy working on Xboxes and we've got quite a lot coming up and some software soon. So watch this space. Right, okay, there we go. The chip is all in. You can see nice solder joints. And I think we did have a look to see have I got the uh let me just see what I got on my uh um steam deck. Have I got the uh, no, that's not the picture I want. Um, where the hell was that gone? Ah. Okay, so there's back to the schematic. So you can see from the actual picture of the Teensy, it's quite relatively easy. You only need one resistor. Um, the value you're going to have to experiment with between the 100 ohm and 200 ohm. Uh, I normally go somewhere about 200. It, it, you're going to have to have a little bit of a play with that. There's also a diagram for the TC2. Um, right, so what we've got to do now is actually program the chip. Now in the package there is a little programmer. Uh, it's the little standard tool, there it is there, and uh, what we're going to do is program the actual the chip. So, let me find the software, uh, which is on here somewhere, there it is. Now, what you need to do is to, it's going to be awkward trying to show you both of these, what I think I'll do is go back to the camera for a second, um, and insert the other image in the uh, in the camera. And for that one, uh, merge. Uh, we probably get one of that, I think. So we'll keep that one. Okay. Well, firstly, you need to connect your Teensy to your computer, of course. You need to have that software running and to put it into program mode you just push the little button and you'll see that you get a little the LED is now flashing red. 
and you go across then to the software and you need to click on file open hex file and go to the folder that's got the software in it'll say ps4 syscon flash atency 4 desktop capture let's see what we can find on here um, right okay so in there if you see there's um, a folder it's not loaders it's uh, under I think I just copied the hex file into the same folder but that's the file you want for the, um, the TNC4 okay so we will go back to TNC4 right so once you've loaded that you select that and open then on the actual uh, TNC um, TNC that's better okay so there's your TNC um, once you've actually connected it to the uh, computer you started this little TNC program up you click on file you load the appropriate software which in this case is the PS4 for the TNC4 um, don't forget you must push the this little button you see there's a white button to the right on the image um, you push that to put it into program mode and then basically you can either click auto to, or click the download arrow which actually as you see was very quick so that is actually now programmed it's as simple as that so it's not rocket science it's actually uh, quite straightforward so that is now programmed really to work what we need to do now is to add um, a resistor and of course hook it up to a Cisco so there's the chip there's the circuit so let's see if we can find a resistor uh, well. <sighs> right just found a couple of resistors I'm not sure what these ones are that looks like it could be a 220 ohm. Uh, 220 ohm. We'll give that a go. It's a little bit on the high side, but we'll try it. It's got two choices. So we need to place the resistor. Uh, that goes between pins. Um, there you go. Pin zero, two, the next pin, isn't it? Basically. Um, can I actually get that in there? We've got room. I apologise for the, the noise. Um, what do we want? So we want desktop, don't we again? Um, right, so in the folders here, you've got your diagrams, where you can see if you teach these four or two. Uh, you have your hardware now in that you've got this in the TC4 is the hex file for the four and vice because for the two the two um, loader is the loader program um, PC now in here there on the bottom that's um, uh, visual basic so you can open that up and compile it yourself which is what I've done and so basically I've now got a bin folder which I'm going to that uh, there's the bin folder um, and then there's the tool um, and I can connect the reason it's given me a, a bit of a grief in here file is because I haven't actually got the uh, system connected so that's the next step so we'll go back to the, uh, the bench okay so there we go we got our program TNC we've now got the PC program actually compiled right so I've got quite a few TNC uh, modules here on uh, already mounted so I'm not TNC um, uh, let me call it Syscon chips for previous work 
and we'll see what we got. I think most of these have already been uh, put into debug mode, but we'll see what we can find anyway. So we want a few links. There's one. Um, there's another of sort. There's a few there. Looking for pin one end and socket the other. And what we got there? There's one. Right. Now, if you look again on your schematic, it will tell you where the. Uh, I know that uh, the first two pins on here, one is reset and one is the tool input. And then up the end here, you got ground and you got the glitch and the VCC. Um, let's just go back to the schematic. Um, I'm more concerned with the pins, what pins it is on the actual chip. Uh, so supply. Let's remove the probes. There is somewhere. Oh, there we go. Let's just see what we have got. Right, okay. So, what we need to do now is hook these up. All I've got to do is remember what the connections were on all of them. So, we've got reset. Uh, we've got... Ah, uh, let's have a quick nosy on the square kit again. The only thing with these, so I'll better just check them. Okay, I want the 100 pin, that one. So, 25's on the end. Uh, can you see? Uh, I've got a habit of forgetting about those people want to see what you're doing. So pin three, five, four, three, two, one. For 20 and 21. I can't actually see the pins. You're going to have to forgive me a sec. I'm going to use a microscope. I won't say the soldering on there. Particularly brilliant, but uh, <clears throat> no excuses. <laughs> Had a bad day. Five, four, is that all? No, pin five. Oh, it doesn't matter because I'm not using pin 35, so I don't know worry about it. I normally only sold the pins that we need to use, it uh, makes life easier. But four, three, two, so that should be one of these two pins, that one. So I'm pretty certain that is the uh, pin 4, so that's uh, VDD, is it on there? And then the next to that should be ground, so that one should be the ground. Which is the back pin there. And that one, yeah, they are both connected around. So this, they're connected internally, I think, because I've only got one pin on them. So the ground pin is that back pin. I'll just pop that on there for a second. So we know that's ground. And then the uh, where's the supply? It goes on the EV. Pin 23, okay, I'll just check what I've got that on pin, which one of these is pin 23, so 5, 4, 3, I think it's that one there, yeah it is, so that one's the red, I'll show you more in a minute, I'll just get this out of the way, that's the, well it should be blue, and then we want to reset I need two more pins, so oh, okay, let's pop that out of the way. Come back to the camera. Probably not quite as close as that, that's probably better. Um, let me just move. Let 
Yeah, I'm going to have to pull out a little bit on my zinc and see everything. Uh, come in a bit from there, can't we? Zoom in. Stop. That'll do. Right, so. Well, I've got to find two more little leads. Let's have a look at my wondrous box of leads. Oh, I've got loads sat out here. Oh, there's a load of them sat here, actually. Oh, there's a couple. Right, okay, not the ideal colour, but they'll do. And reset and tool. So I think the reset is white. And the tool is black, which is not ideal, but I'll be okay. Ah, uh, so, so we, in fact, it's the other way around. Uh, white is tall. Black is reset. That's probably not a good idea to have two black leads when one isn't the earth. Right, okay, so let's hook this up. That's, according to that, goes on the five. That negative goes on the ground. The glitch pin goes on pin four, is it? Pin four. So that's about here somewhere. A little bit shorter room here, that'll do. Um, then what do we want? We want the tool pin on one end of that resistor, pin zero. Now this is going to get a problem, this is going to get tight. So pin zero, I might just about get in there. Yep. And then the other end, uh, pin five. So I must have gone pin five. That's reset, I believe. Uh, it should be next to pin four, he says. Right, and now have a quick uh, close-up loop and see. Yeah, I think we're all connected correctly. So... Basically, that should be. Oh, I'm dropping it on the floor. Should be ready to be uh, red and glitched. So, what we'll do, let me just go and sort out some software. Okay. Um, now, what do you want? We want. The tool and your shared screen. There we go. Right, there we go. That's the tool running. As I say, this is not the complete video. What I've done is just gone through how to build the Tintsy, program the Tintsy, and get yourself going. Um, the software will write. It will. Uh, it will. You can do everything. So uh, you can do it with the um, the chip on board by lifting one pin off. Um, or you can do it, take the chip off the board, so there's no need to replace the chip anymore. You can actually write the chip directly with the software. Um, as I say, what we're going to do now is just glitch the chip and read it. But bearing in mind, this chip has already been set in debug mode, but it doesn't really matter because there's a facility in this software to just actually do the debug. Um, in fact, you've got quite a lot of options. You've got dump full Cisc and flash, partial dump flash, dump Cisc on MVS or NSV only, erase full Cisc on, erase full Cisc on the flash except uh, boot zero and block safe, erase partial Cisc on, erase MVS and SMVS only, uh, right full syscon flash, right partial syscon flash, uh, right syscon MVS only, enable syscon debug mode. As I say, there's quite a lot this will do, and I think the, uh, the guys have done a great job. Um, so that's, uh, I'm not sure I'm going to pronounce this right, but uh, it's a big shout out to um, Abe Carino, I think that's how it's pronounced. And Egis, uh, I, I tell you what, I'll spell the name, the second name, Z-G-Y-C-N-Q. But I will put these up anyway. They've done a good job of the uh, the tool. Um, as I say, I think, yeah, they, it is superb. It runs well. Um, it's one of those things I'm sure they'll be better up as time goes by. 
the the only thing I have problems with as a software is I couldn't get it to run. I had to compile it on my machine, but that's possibly just something I've done wrong. But uh, yeah, it's great. So you can actually write and read your sys on software that's free. But I'm not sure about it doing any repair work. That's the only thing. I think you, a lot of the repair work you possibly may have to do in edit mode with a, a hex edit. Um, but as I say, I don't know because I haven't been right through it. But uh, yeah, so what I will do, I will do another video later when I've had a chance to dig deeper into it. But as a, a the first look, it is very good. And as I say, I built the, put the SIS, uh, the TC4 together on the board, programmed it, and it was up and running in a few minutes. So, um, yeah, I think it's a winner, you know, for you guys that want to get more involved. But the, the down, you, you've got to start remembering that when you start playing around with writing to SISCONs and that, you can actually. Uh, end up bricking your machine. So make sure you know what you're doing. As I say, I can't accept any responsibilities for anything you do wrong. But yeah, great stuff. Great stuff. Look, keep an eye out for uh, more information on it. And as I say, I'll try and do a bit more. Uh, I will put links down to the GitHub and uh, any other links I can find associated that I help. And uh, a big thanks to the guys that have written the software. As I say, I just can't, <laughs> I can't pronounce the names correctly, I don't think. But uh, you know who you are, and you've done a brilliant job. Uh, okay, well, we're getting close. It's doing two dumps, so basically it can compare one to the other. Um, this ensures that so uh, you have got a correct dump. If you start getting a lot of errors when you run the dump and the two don't match, you may have to play around with that resistor value. Um, I think it says 100 to 200. It might be 300. I, I can't uh, can't remember. I've actually used the 220 ohm. Uh, it seems fine. Um, we're slowly getting there. Uh, let's see where we go. Oh, it's finished. Right, okay. Well, I think I'm actually voicing over this bit of video for the simple reason that the noise was so bad from the chiller running on the PC that it drowned me out a bit. Um, I, can't, I can't remember what else was on here. Oh, yeah, I did compare the files manually. Um, so what I did, I opened up, here we go, each file in... Um, Hex edit, and uh, there we go. There's the first file, and then I drag the second file in, which you'll we'll see will appear at the top very shortly. There it is, and then in the anal uh, analyst, uh, run the uh, comparison test. Unfortunately, every time you change uh, Windows, the capture disappears. Oh, right. Well, there it is. It's actually has come up and said they're identical uh hang on i'll see if i get the other one there you go <laughs> so uh, that's it but as i said this is just um i say i only downloaded the software last night compiled it this morning um i haven't been right through it so it was just a case of getting this out pretty quick so you guys can get on it and get started with it as I say, uh, I'll put the GitHub links and everything else down. And a big shout out to the two boys that have done the job, two guys. And uh, I'll uh, put a big shout out to them as well. Uh, they are our YouTube channels. They've got some uh, videos on there showing how to do a bit more than I showed you. I'll leave it with.